Okay, this is the example essay for The Lion King. I'm going to go through the formatting so that you can better understand how to do this. To begin, to make your life a lot easier as far as the formatting goes, there's one simple trick that you can do. You can basically use any essay that you created or this essay here as a template. What you would do is you would go to File, and then you would go to make a copy. When it pops up, just click in the box that you can delete this copy of example and change it to your class period. So let's say that you are in seventh period. Then it says share with the same people. You don't want to click that because mine's public right now. So just hit OK. It'll open up a new screen in which is my essay, which you can actually just type over. So for example, you can go up here, you can change the last name to yours, change the first and last name here, and then of course the class period. You'll want to change everything else, for example the title, and of course the essay itself. Now this is already formatted in double space times New Roman 12 points, so you wouldn't have to deal with any of those issues. But for those of you who of course want to understand how to do that, when you start the essay, whenever it's blank, the first thing that you want to do is you want to, before you even type on the screen, you want to change your font. You know, you click on the screen, you change your font to times, 12 point, and then you go over to these arrows and you change it to double. Before you even type, you just want to click on the page if you create a new one. Then it will actually set it up. So you can either make a copy and get the formatting down, or you can do that yourself to get the formatting. To do this, the page number, you go to File, or sorry, insert, page number, and then this first one here where it shows consecutive pages one and two. Then that will insert up here, and then you can just type your name in front of it. So now you know how to do it both ways. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at the content of the essay. My first sentence is my creative opener. That's your hook. So I wrote, evil is what drives the hero of a tale to fight for change, to fight for difference, to fight for good. That's what's drawing my reader in. The next sentence should be your thesis statement. In Disney's The Lion King, as you can see the Lion King's italicized, the theme of, and I put in quote marks to show that it's kind of set off, because otherwise when you read it through, it wouldn't make sense. So the theme of good will always overcome evil is most developed through the use of the following symbolic archetypes. Light versus darkness, water versus desert, and haven versus wilderness. You can see that I've done three different symbols that were found on that sheet. Now, the first one I should talk about is light versus darkness, since that was first in my thesis. I have a transitional phrase, to begin. And then this is my topic sentence. In other words, this should tell you what all my examples afterwards are going to be about for this support. So to begin, light versus darkness is omnipresent, that means always there, always present, throughout the film, making good shine an evil doll. Now I go to an example. For example, Mufasa, the benevolent king, and Simba, the future king, walk in light, a symbol of good. I've connected that back to my thesis, which is also relative to my topic sentence. While Scar, the villainous brother, is shrouded in darkness, a symbol of evil every time he is on the screen, foreshadowing his evil intentions. Again, this falls under that topic sentence and it relates back to the thesis statement because I am talking about symbolic archetypes that reinforce um, good and evil and I use light and darkness. Now another transitional word, in addition, so now I'm talking about my next one, which if you look at the thesis statement, it was water versus desert. So in addition, water versus desert further enhances the elements of good and evil. There's my topic sentence for this part. So I need to talk about that. Water, which I referenced first, water pours down, showing new life when Simba takes the throne, which is a moment of good in the film. However, the extreme desert climate that exists during Scar's time as king symbolizes death and hunger. Both are the consequences of Scar's evil ways. So, water first, desert second. In my topic sentence, therefore, it was shown in my examples after that. Lastly, transitional word or phrase. So that's a word. Haven versus wilderness continues to support the theme of good and evil. 
So again, I'm always in my topic sentences between each support, I'm going back to that thesis statement, making sure that it's clear that this is what I'm writing about and why. If you notice, I'm not announcing. I'm not saying in this example or pointing at my paper. Simba travels, so I talked about, sorry, haven and then wilderness. So Simba travels to a safe haven in order to repair his emotional and physical health, aiding him in accomplishing good. So there's my first support or example after that support. When he returns home, now a dangerous wilderness, he must face the evil that has taken over the land, Scar. So then I talk about the dangerous wilderness that he had to endure. He must face evil that has taken over the land, Scar. So I'm talking about the wilderness representing something dangerous because I described it as a dangerous wilderness, which is also on that sheet. So ultimately, there's my transitional word into my conclusion. Ultimately, good cannot exist without evil. There's a lasting thought that I've added in my conclusion. Archetypal symbols strengthen the theme of good, will always overcome evil, making them a necessary catalyst to the deeper truth in the film Lion King. And that's how I end my paragraph. Now, for those of you who are being driven crazy by this one paragraph format, that's very simple to fix that. If you want to start practicing breaking up your paragraph, which obviously by the end of this year we're all going to be doing, you would simply go to the end of your thesis statement to your first support. You would hit enter. It'll automatically tab it in um, and, of course, keep that double spacing. And then when you find your next one, for example, in addition, you can hit enter and it will tab it in. And then you find your last support, hit enter, it'll automatically tab in. And then you go to your conclusion, hit enter, and then it'll also tab it in. So if you feel that your paragraphs are getting kind of lengthy and you hit that full page, then go ahead and practice hitting enter. And then see if this will also help you to make sure that you are keeping on the to topic for that paragraph, for that idea, for each one. Now again, you're not required to paragraph this, but if you want to, then that's how you would do it. And clearly, because you have those three supports, it would, it would turn into, ultimately, a five-paragraph essay because you would have that introduction, you would have those three supports explained with examples, and then you would have your conclusion. Now, you need to make a creative title, no, just still my title, come up with a title that makes sense to what you have written. And that is how you would write this essay. Now, remember that once you have written this and gone through it multiple times, you need to take the time to revise, to edit, to reorganize if you need to, if you didn't follow the organization of your thesis statement, um, to elaborate if there are very few examples or there's really no connection. I mean, take time to really edit. It shouldn't just simply be when it's editing process that you just see if there's any misspellings. You should read it aloud. Read from the back, start with the last sentence, and then go to the next sentence and so forth. Reading aloud because that will help you to catch any errors better than if you start from the beginning and read to the end. Because you will tend to, if you read from beginning to end, fix the errors in your brain when you read aloud and you'll miss it. So start with the last sentence. When he returns home, now a dangerous wilderness, he must face the evil that has taken over the land. Scar. Actually, that wasn't the last sentence of mine, sorry. Um, this would be my last sentence. So I'd read this sentence aloud, and then I would read this sentence aloud, and so forth and so forth, seeing if I missed anything. Okay, so that's what I want you to do. Go through your essay, take it step by step.